Sure. Okay. Please go ahead, Marina. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, today I will be presenting to you uh, the UNESCO Charter regarding the protection and management of the underwater cultural heritage. Uh, I chose to focus on this charter. I found it really interesting because usually, usually we just uh, focus on, uh, we think uh, there's just uh, heritage on ground, uh, on the land, but actually there is a lot underwater as well. Uh, and this is because uh, the water level uh, change, changes a lot from uh, past to present. So that's why some, uh, like even full cities uh, uh, start uh, getting underwater. Yeah. Uh, and also other things like shipwrecks, and as I will talk to you and show you. Um, so this is just a quick overview about uh, the sections of my presentation. First, uh, uh, we will define together what is underwater cultural heritage, and then uh, we, will, uh, we will see why it is important and what threatens it and um, uh, its presence in Egypt. And finally, uh, I'm gonna present a quick video that, uh, that shows uh, the relationship between uh, underwater cultural heritage and uh, the future situation. Yeah. Uh, also, I want to point out that this uh, charter was uh, founded by the UNESCO in 1996. So it's pretty recent, yeah. Um, okay, so I'll start by what is it? So what is underwater cultural heritage? According to the uh, UNESCO, the definition of underwater cultural heritage is uh, uh, archaeolog uh, sorry, archaeological heritage uh, in or, or has been removed from an underwater environment. Um, so this is defined as all traces of human existence having a cultural, historical, or archaeological character, which have been partially or totally underwater uh, peri periodically or continuously for at least 100 years. It has to be 100 years uh, minimum, yeah. And uh, uh, for your reference, Yanni, the this is the link of the, um, the full section about uh, uh, underwater cultural heritage in the UNESCO. So uh, what examples of, of, of uh, archaeological uh, underwater cultural heritage do we have? Uh, there is three main types. The first type is structures, so archi architectural structures. As we can see here, um, sites, structures, buildings, artifacts, and human remains. Uh, together with their archaeological and natural context. So as we can see here, there are some buildings, uh, some statues, this is a pharaonic statue, it's in Alexandria, I think, and uh, some human remains and something like a pyramid, but it's not from Egypt, it's from uh, another country, so I forgot it's Malish. Um, and then, uh, The next type is the uh, shipwrecks. So um, a big a big part of uh, of uh, underwater uh, heritage is uh, shipwrecks. Uh, so vessels, aircraft, other vehicles, or any part uh, of of them, uh, and also their what they contain. Yani, the contents of the shipwreck is also considered part of the underwater heritage. Um, and uh, the picture in the middle is from uh, is, is from Egypt, and uh, the, this uh, ship on uh, on the left is uh, is uh, one of the of the most uh, famous shipwrecks. Uh, in, but it's not in Egypt, yani. It's I think it's in Europe. And uh, the, 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 these, this picture on the right is. Uh, very ancient uh, pottery, Bordu. But these pictures just show you examples and know all of these things are considered Taba uh, al underwater heritage. Uh, 
And finally, the UNESCO uh, defines um, any any object of prehistoric character uh, underwater to be part of the heritage. And on that topic, I found this interesting article. I just want to show you show it to you really quickly. Also, I encourage you to read it in your own time. It talks about uh, the uh, the underwater uh, heritage in uh, in Egypt. Uh, sorry, not in Egypt. Uh, prehistoric archaeology underwater, and uh, it shows us pictures. And X-ray studies is very very interesting, Yanis yani, Sarah. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Yeah, so uh, also I forgot a point uh, is, um, is that uh, it's regarding yani, uh, UNESCO doesn't care so much. I was not really concerned about the, the yani, who owns what Yani, because sometimes uh, yani underwater heritage is a little bit different from on land heritage because sometimes uh, مثلا, a ship is going from a place to another yani, from a country and it's traveling and it's shipwrecked in, yani, in a place that's really far away from, from where it started from its country. Fa, this is where it lands. Fa, it, yani, it, it might not belong to, to the area where it landed, but still it yeah, UNESCO is concerned with protecting it um, more than identifying uh, yeah, which country owns this piece of heritage, unless it's very clear yeah, if it's like a pharaonic uh, statue or something like that. Yeah. I wanted to point that out because they wrote it in their uh, articles. And then the and then why is it important? Why is underwater heritage important? Um, just like uh, on ground uh, yani heritage components, it contributes to the formation of identity and uh, it's important to the people's sense of community. And uh, if it is managed sensitively, it can contribute to the, to the yani business of tourism where it's it's going to have a, an economical benefit uh, on on the on, on the country and that's like mainly why it's important in short and then uh, what threatens it what are the threats in place that that threaten underwater heritage and uh, that's why the UNESCO is trying to deal with it. First thing is marine activities. Uh, many marine activities, uh, which which yeah, you know, nothing is wrong with them. They're beneficial and desirable, but sometimes they can have unfortunate consequences on the on the elements of cultural heritage uh, underwater. Yani. If, if it's not, if, if care is not taken, yani if there are some uh, fish nets thrown and disposed of, it can cover, uh, can cover the elements of culture. Uh, if there are uh, uh, like submarines and stuff, and yani, there are many ways to kind of, if, if we if we don't identify that this is a site where there's a culture heritage underwater, we can like bump into it or dispose things on top of it and things like that. I keep pressing escape and I'm supposed to press back. <laughs> and uh, the second thing is construction works underwater. So uh, um, the idea with the construction works is that it can alter the seabed. Um, and and uh, or it alters the flow of uh, current and uh, the sediment and also it can leave uh, pol uh, pollutants. So all of that can uh, can yani, can affect the 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 masala and the statues or whatever that's under water. It can uh, dis dissolve it away. Uh, 
uh, also if the seabed level is changed, it, it can, yani if it's, uh, if it was a building and it's, uh, yani mahfur fil ard, if the seabed changes, it, it might uh, cause the building to, to kind of come off shwaya or become unstable, yani just like on ground with the And finally, the last threat is exploitation of resources. So underwater cultural heritage may also be threatened by insensitive exploitation of both living and non-living uh, resources. So yeah, um, by living and non-living, it means that uh, yeah, the, uh, um, for example, um, مثلا throwing مثلا oil into the into the sea or things like that into the oceans it can affect the 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 cultural heritage components underwater and uh, yeah any things like that Okay, the next question is, do we have underwater culture heritage in Egypt? Yes, we do. And um, it's actually very, very interesting. Um, uh, yani these, these are just a few examples, but if you Google it, hatta, you're gonna find more. There are a lot of uh, pharaonic statues and um, uh, kind of marble, uh, marble, uh, pieces with hieroglyphics, hieroglyphic, hieroglyphics on it. And um, also, I want to remind you, uh, like, remember when we took an introduction to Egyptology, that some pyramids, like the chamber, under the water level. But that's because the, the waterbed uh, was raised. Uh, the water level yani, was raised uh, amongst the years. So all of that is considered underwater culture her heritage. Sometimes it's it's left underwater, and sometimes, uh, yani, according to the case, how to yani, what's in most benefit to the element. Sometimes uh, uh, UNESCO chooses to extract it from the water, as we can see in this picture, yani, on the on the right. Uh, also, I forgot to say that uh, yeah, you should totally check out this uh, this article. Just gonna show it to you real quick. It it talks more in detail about the cultural heritage in Egypt. It's very very interesting, yeah. Sorry, I accidentally stopped sharing. Okay, finally, I um, I want to show you this quick video which talks about the future of underwater heritage, especially with the COVID-19 situation. Uh, this video is from the UNESCO and it's just three minutes, but it's, uh, it has a lot of useful yani, information. Some people talk in languages other than English, but uh, just follow the um, the text in Maktouta. Can you hear the sound of my of my computer? No, we don't hear the sound, yeah, Marina. I just, I, I fixed that. I think it should be audible now. Yes, here. Je vois dans, dans cette pandémie mondiale uh, qui, qui dure, uh, qui s'étend même. 
partout euh, sur la planète, j'y vois le renforcement d'une conviction profonde de la nécessité d'une coopération euh, mondiale. Et ça, ça doit inspirer, je crois, la réflexion, en tout cas les scientifiques en sont convaincus depuis longtemps, la, la réflexion qui est qu'il n'y a, a d'avenir que dans la solidarité et la coopération. In my thought, this epidemic will last for quite some time. It decreases chance for UCH people to meet in occasions. No conferences, no trainings, or no cooperative fieldwork. So in a period of time, the exchange of information or ideas may be reduced in some ways. Le patrimoine, et ici le patrimoine culturel subaquatique, euh, est l'un des objets d'étude euh, de l'archéologie. Je pense que l'archéologie permet de prendre du recul sur les événements actuels et de contribuer par conséquent au raisonnement sur la transition post-Covid. La protection et la promotion du patrimoine subaquatique sont donc un élément clé de notre futur. C'est pourquoi nous continuons notamment à mener nos missions. Le milieu de la culture, le milieu du patrimoine, c'est déjà le parent pauvre des financements. Certains projets risquent de passer outre la nécessité d'évaluer puis de documenter le patrimoine submergé, ce qui va inévitablement entraîner potentiellement sa destruction et une perte de connaissances énorme pour un patrimoine qui est déjà fragile et non renouvelable. For underwater cultural heritage resource managers, COVID gives the opportunity to work more effectively with the impacted dive businesses. By encouraging financial assistance to those businesses, underwater cultural heritage managers can create new or build on existing relations. Managers can also ask in return for funding, the opportunity to, for those type of shops to go out and look at local sites and to give back information around the condition of those sites. Both these outcomes fit into the UN decade of ocean science, in mapping the ocean and building the blue economy. And what could be better than that? On voit au Québec, en fait, qu'il y a vraiment un encouragement pour le commerce local, les initiatives locales et une curiosité nouvelle aussi pour le patrimoine local, le patrimoine maritime et subaquatique. Et ça nous permet, en fait, de pouvoir ouvrir la discussion et de pouvoir euh, partager et de discuter sur le patrimoine culturel submergé et la nécessité de, de le protéger. Il y a actuellement des menaces, peut-être sur le patrimoine subaquatique, et il faut donc rester vigilant. Mais cette crise permet également de donner un délai euh, au patrimoine. Ce délai libère du temps qui nous permet de partager les connaissances issues de son étude à l'ensemble de ses bénéficiaires. Au-delà de certains stress, le Covid nous permet peut-être de prendre du recul euh, par rapport à notre propre gestion du patrimoine culturel et naturel que nous devons impérativement transmettre aux générations futures. Nous ne sommes pas en charge d'un patrimoine français, mais d'un patrimoine de l'humanité, où qu'il soit dans le monde. Si chacun pense qu'il ne protège, qu'il n'a à protéger que son patrimoine, c'est le patrimoine de l'humanité qui est menacé. Et donc l'avenir du monde, l'avenir de l'humain, passera par la reconnaissance qu'il faut revenir à cette solidarité transversale sans laquelle il n'y a pas d'avenir. So, keep in touch. Prenez soin de vous. That uh, was the end of the video, and also it's the end of my presentation. I just wanna put light on the most important point in this point in this video. They all said that we need to cooperate to protect the uh, underwater heritage, whatever the country is, and uh, also, yani, despite any COVID-19 situation affected the, uh, yani, affected tourism in general, but it kind of gave. The oceans a break and it gave heritage a break. Yani Fallon, a lot of uh, as as I think we all heard, a lot of natural environment in the oceans. Ukida bada it and fish come back to their natural environments because they're not uh, they're not uh, uh, they're not distracted anymore by masala and uh, people on the beach and stuff like that. So same goes for the underwater heritage. Uh, but um, like after the COVID is, is over, like we all hope to, to go back to searching for more heritage sites and and uh, working to protect it. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Marina. Really very interesting and very clear. And the video also is uh, really uh, 
uh, nice. Uh, I think we should uh, uh, arrange something for the effect of COVID-19 on heritage in general. So uh, would the Titanic be considered uh, heritage? Um, something Titanic? Well, UNESCO said anything more than 100 years. Uh, is it more than 100 years? Charles. <laughs> I yes, it is more than 100 years. I think it should, uh, we should vote for considering it uh, cultural heritage, you know. <laughs> Questions for Marina or comments, reflections? Yes, Marina, very, very interesting presentation. Uh, I just uh, have two questions for you. Uh, so when you said that the, 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 the underwater cultural heritage is destroyed or being destroyed sometimes, mainly uh, you were talking about the man-made um, destruction or is it the natural also? Can you, can you give examples, for example, what are the natural causes for, for heritage to be destroyed? Well, Saraha, I was focusing on the man-made aspect more in my presentation because uh, yani if it's something natural, خلاص, kind of, it's not in our hands. It's nature has the upper hand, but some things are in our hand, and that's what the UNESCO put light on, some destructive behaviors that we do. But so, of course, there are natural reasons why yani, um, the sea currents sometimes are really strong and they, they damage the, the statues or the buildings, sometimes the pH of the water uh, like eats away or dissolves the, the, the stone or um, uh, Yeah, he thinks like that. Okay, so. Well, I, I think, come in with the, with the climate change, I, mean, I think climate change is one of the most uh, significant things when speaking about, uh, about uh, underwater heritage with the rising sea levels and the change. Yani, I think it, it would have been, yani, mungkin nabus bordo ala, ala the effects of COVID-19 and of climate change as a as a bigger threat or moment what's happening in Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. The, the climate change and, you know, like, for example, tsunamis that happened, for example, this is also uh, damaging a lot of the, not only the, 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 the underwater cultural heritage, but also the, the marine uh, actually life. It's, uh, it's a very threatening uh, situation. And maybe some heritage not being the water underwater, but being in a few years underwater. So yes, we are, we are at the sea rise, of course, on uh, the uh, coasts of Egypt. So students, where are you? No questions from your part or comments? Can we all put a stamp for Marina? Yes, it was really good. Neymar, put a stamp for Marina. I don't know how to put these hearts up. You go to options up and uh, uh, you push annotate. Okay, options. Annotate. And then uh, stamp. Choose the stamp that you like. Oh, lots of hearts for you, ya Marina. <laughs> By Marina. Okay, the clapping. <laughs> yes. uh, would you consider the shipwrecks uh, that happened in front of, of Abu Ir during the French expedition? Because you talked about ownership. So, you know, there was a big battle between the British and the French. Uh, army in Abu Ir, and basically half of the of the French um, boats were uh, actually sunk in, in 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 Abu Ir in the in the sea. So the ownership here would go uh, for France, or is it Egyptian, or is it international? Uh, because if it's in the international water, this is something also that I I was like trying to understand from your uh, presentation. But maybe uh, any of the of your colleagues can also uh, give some opinion about it. Oh, I mean, what, what do you think, students? 
like uh, mainly the it's, ownership uh, of uh, the wreckage of uh, uh, the battle of Abu Ir, is it French or Egyptian? And who should be responsible for it? It depends on the sea water that it's found in. If it's found in the middle, middle ground, like in the international waters, it belongs to international heritage. And if it's found on the sea borders of Egypt, it belongs to the Egyptian heritage. Well, that is a very pragmatic answer, Ya Marwan. Hiya. <laughs> but I think uh, uh, there is something called shared heritage. You see, yes. and, uh, many of uh, the colonizers uh, claim uh, their heritage in, in uh, the, the, their colonies, their ex-colonies, uh, like uh, Portugal and in India, like uh, French in Egypt, uh, or uh, the English are really uh, timid about that, but the French are very uh, uh, keen to keep the French heritage in Egypt. Uh, and uh, there are examples. Uh, for example, uh, what we consider uh, uh, the Suez Canal and the, the Lesseps, uh, their heritage. We are trying to give the Lesseps back uh, as a statue on uh, its place in Pursaid. Uh, did you hear about that? Uh, so shared heritage is an uh, is an issue, and the Italians also in Egypt. The, the, um, uh, the, uh, there is a big book on uh, uh, buildings built by Italian architects in Egypt. Anyway, uh, I really would like that somebody would uh, uh, tackle this in, uh, in his research. Shared heritage is a uh, uh, very important uh, subject. Okay, I think uh, we can go now to uh, next presentation. Uh, uh, Nora, uh, uh, Nuran Shaheen, is Nuran here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Marina. Really wonderful presentation. Lovely. You talk <laughs> later about the hats. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, Nuran, you have 10 minutes. Okay, um, good morning everybody. Today in my presentation I'll be um, talking about the ECOMOS Charter on the Built Vernacular Heritage and uh, having my case study as uh, the Siwa Oasis. So just a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about today. So basically the Built Vernacular Heritage, um, statement of purpose of this charter, um, uh, giving a quick intro about the Siwa Oasis as a world heritage site, uh, the problems and threats of Siwa Oasis, and then finally the guidelines and conservation practice. Okay, so basically the built vernacular heritage um, occupies a central place in affection and pride, so meaning that has a very high sentimental value for uh, people, um, which makes it like a, a characteristic and an attractive product of society. Um, it is very practical and at the same time, like possesses interest and beauty. And it focuses, yani, I will focus on the contemporary life. At the same time, it has like, um, it appreciates the record of history of society. Um, although it is a work of man, it's also, um, it is also the creation of time. So it is better to take into consideration like the traditional harmonies, which constitutes like um, the core of the man's own existence. Um, and finally, um, it is a fundamental expression of the culture of a community, um, of its relationship with its territory, and um, the expression of the world's cultural diversity. So basically, the statement of purpose of this charter um, pretty much and it says the appreciation that there should be like some appreciation and successful, successful protection of the vernacular heritage. Um, which depends highly on the involvement and the support of the community um, with its continuing use and maintenance. And also the governments uh, and responsible authorities must recognize like the rights of the communities to maintain their like living traditions, protect, um, uh, protect them through masalan, administrative, financial and legislative means in order to hand them down to uh, future generations. Okay, um, so uh, moving to the case study, Siwa Oasis. So just like a quick geography about it. So it's, you know, situated in um, the northern edge of the Western desert in Egypt, which is like 
a, a close border um, to southern um, Mediterranean port town of Marsamatruf. And it is known for its like uh, prominent archaeological remains. Um, it's rich in tourism, agriculture, handcrafts, a lot of like cultural um, uh, activities as well. It had, contains a lot of natural features um, and it's known for having like Bedouin tribes uh, in the region, which mainly, um, which they're mainly like uh, exposed to this kind of like practice of agriculture due to the natural features of the site. Um, so which makes the oasis like uh, containing like a lot of palm trees, like a lot of like natural springs. Um, and other cultural traditions such as like um, embroidery techniques and other arts and crafts that I will be discussing later on. So why do we consider this as a, as a um, world heritage site? Um, it is due to the historic treasures of Siwa such as um, other um, buildings that date from the Pharaonic period uh, such as the Temple of Oracle uh, of, the Amu, of Amun, uh, the Mountain of the Dead or Gabal al Mauta. Uh, temple of Um Ubaida and the uh, Cleopatra Springs, which are considered like sacred um, treasures. The second is the uh, natural features of the site. So it's uh, known for its like um, wide range of like variety of like landscape, palm dates, um, mountain ranges or terrains. Um, salty lakes, freshwater springs, sand dunes, and it has also like um, a variety of, of biodiversity. Uh, also, regarding the arts and crafts, they're like traditional um, products that are usually man handmade uh, from the uh, nature. And this is like an example of uh, this man making like products um, using the palm tree leaves or the sheets. Um, making like uh, it also can be used in like construction of houses like this is uh, this kind of like beam or fence um, and also like the Sierra culture is known for its like variety of traditional arts and crafts like jewelry pottery and textile and uh, the second is uh, moving on to like materiality uh, of the Siwian house, or Beti Siwi, which is also like a traditional house that is now made as uh, turned into a museum for that shares like the community's uh, cultural practices and tradition. And uh, what's really interesting was that uh, the house is actually made of this kind of material known as uh, kerchief stone. And basically, it's a traditional kind of uh, Syrian architecture that is used using this kind of uh, material. So Karshif, it's like basically a mix of uh, sodium and potassium chloride and quartz. And it is kind of like um, mend together with, uh, with like clay mortar. And this is like an example of like a very old um, city of Shali, which is like now abandoned how, because Apparently, the car shift uh, material is kind of like brittle, and they found like there are some cracks like within the uh, palm beams, like underneath the palm beams. So, uh, which made it like a little bit kind of weakening. We it weakened like the structure of it, and um, therefore, like a lot of buildings have been deteriorated. And it led to its destruction. Therefore, um, it has been abandoned ever since the 1930s. And also, they noticed that the foundations have been like kind of unstable due to the high um, ground of water, uh, the water table. Okay, uh, moving to the threats of the Siwa Oasis. So, um, uh, first and foremost, I'm going to be talking about the environmental level. Uh, so, it's mainly the problems um, were from uh, the um, the water and the uh, the water salination or the kind of the salt the salt level of the water has uh, been very concentrated, which led to methylan damage of certain trees, certain like um, landscape elements due to the salinity. Um, a lot of desertification um, has happened because of people, the increase of the activity of the agriculture. So uh, the population have increased 
therefore the agriculture level or the activity of agriculture has increased, therefore the, there's a lot of masalan diversification. And it's a very interesting that they actually use this kind of like hardened uh, crust over here as the cardship material that they would later on use in architecture. So the problem of the rising uh, ground water tables um, it kind of like worsened the new areas uh, under the irrigation, which caused like excessive water usage um, to develop in like underneath the, um, the underneath the landscape. So this is basically on the ground at the environmental level. However, on the urban level, um, as you can see here, um, there is a very poor or very few formal guidelines. Uh, or architectural codes for development of the city of Siwa. Uh, people usually kind of um, neglect, they start to neglect uh, the, uh, call the architectural identity of the city and they um, lend more towards the buildings of the concrete and other modern building styles, which kind of like pop out of nowhere. Um, so therefore this is like a very, um very prominent problem because uh, this is um affecting highly the tourism so moving uh, i'm going to wrap up right now the the conservation practice so the first thing is the research and documentation citing landscape and groups of buildings so this is like just an example of providing in order to visualize this kind of case and the factors conducting a SWOT analysis regarding the environment urban heritage and tourism the third is the traditional uh, building system. So uh, basically by combining both, having this kind of um, balance between development and conservation uh, by using like uh, incorporating like different traditional techniques into like modern buildings. Uh, the fifth thing is uh, adaptation and the use of vernacular structures that carried out in a, you know, and with respect to the, uh, the the site and its accessible standards. So this is like a picture of, that shows like the renovation of an old uh, city in Shali, a building an old city in the old city of Shali. So this is like a mosque and this is how it's been incorporated with the modern restoration and um, conservation technique. And finally um, is the training. So in order to like raise awareness for the government in order to like, because there's always this issue between the government and the tribe. So they're always like having this problem with decision making and um, in um, determining the uh, identity, the local identity of the city. So there should be, they should provide like education programs for conservators, information programs, which improve like the public awareness. And finally, um, regional networks on vernacular architecture to change the expertise and experiences. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Noran. Where are the references? Oh, <laughs> I forgot. I have them, but I forgot to uh, put them on at the end. And did um, you upload your presentation on the Google Drive? Yes, I did. Can Can you please add the references to 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 to, to the Google Drive your, on your presentation at the end? Uh, uh, at the end slide. Yes. Uh, I also have some doubts, unfortunately, of course, uh, you had all these uh, through articles or books, I don't know. What uh, Do you remember what references uh, did you use? Yeah, I mainly lose like research papers and articles online, so. Yeah, because I think some uh, of the images that you shared with us is from uh, a tourist village uh, uh, at Jafar uh, mountain. Uh, uh, so, I mean, uh, they, they, they had a lot to do with uh, uh, changing the material, you know, to enhancing uh, the quality of the uh, uh, mortar, uh, like this one, for example, or uh, there was another one with the terrace uh, so you you need to indicate what is uh, original heritage and what is uh, uh, developed uh, developments uh, because those people I ah, yes this one because those people also do uh, uh, restoration mm. uh, 
and they do new buildings with the same uh, style and same technique. Uh, did anybody from the students uh, visit Siwa? Not sure, no. Marwan, you not there? Yet. No, not yet, but not yet. I'm planning to do so in the next winter. Yeah, that should be lovely. It's, uh, it's really, really very uh, beautiful uh, there. Actually, I knew Ahmed Bansour from Siwa, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some, I don't know how many years ago. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yanuran. But please uh, don't forget to add uh, the references. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, it's open for uh, my colleagues to comment and also for students. I need to hear your voice, students. Uh, I will go, I will start until uh, we can think of something. Um, um, one thing is that Tula is not a World Heritage Site, huh? so uh, we have to... Oh, we really? Have pride okay. in it is a heritage, but it's not a World Heritage Site. Not yet, not yet. I think it's on the tentative list. Exactly, but it's not, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the, the, I mean, the, the title yet. Yeah, we will know more today about, uh, on, on my lecture, about uh, the process of uh, assigning uh, uh, a site as World Heritage Site. So, so you will understand the, the comment uh, of uh, mm -hmm. Ahmed well. So yeah. Sorry, Ahmed, to interrupt you. To... No, 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 not at all. My, the second thing I would like to also, it's a, it's, a, it's a question that we all can think about, because if uh, if we call the Karshif building with the Karshif or with any other material, the vernacular architecture or the vernacular heritage, one very important issue is that the vernacular is continuous, or if, if nobody is building with Karshif anymore, then it becomes archaeological site. No or yes? Um, I'm just wondering. So a very main issue about calling something vernacular that it is continuing. Once it's stopped, if nobody is using mud anymore to build their houses or karshif in Skiwa, then the, it becomes archaeological site because this vernacular is stopped. What do you think? Um. Oh, who wants? Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Go ahead. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, because it stopped, does that make it not vernacular anymore? Yani it's no, it's vernacular, but it's archaeological because at that point, the know how of such, uh, yani how to build in vernacular is not there anymore. Yani, I mean, the, the, the main essence of vernacular that people are using the local materials and they are, it's a process that continues. Can, can I, can I uh, interrupt again, Malish? Sure. Uh, it is like the people themselves uh, building with themselves with the local uh, materials. Uh, this is what uh, Ahmed means. I give you an example, oh. like the architecture of, uh, of Hassan Fathi. Uh, and the, all his followers, do you consider it vernacular? He's using the same uh, principles, but with sometimes with the, uh, with the same materials, uh, sometimes with different materials, but there is an architect here who, who decide and uh, the, 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 the process uh, is different. Architect, uh, uh, contractor uh, and builder and, and owner. Vernacular architecture uh, is more a community architecture where uh, uh, the people themselves build, even if they build it together, you see, or it comes spontaneously, not, uh, not planned. Uh, is this what you mean, Ahmed? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was, that's the conclusion. Yeah. I, want, I wanted the students to argue or to reach this conclusion that you shared. That if people are not using it anymore, so is it vernacular or not? Mm. If, if we, if we like, like uh, Dalila said now, if Hassan Fathi is building with the tradition, is this vernacular or is it ethnic chic? 
you know, like. Mm-hmm. I believe it's uh, it's reasonable to consider the architecture of Hassan Fathi still a vernacular architecture since he's using the same materials and concepts in building, even though he's adding his own like uh, language to it, but it's still based on the same principles. So he used the vernacular uh, uh, elements, or uh, let's let's say the vernacular uh, language, uh, or... yeah, rather than being a real vernacular architecture. He used the language, or he used the elements that is used in vernacular architecture. No. So, so had so had Hassan Fathi made the people build his design, then it, then. Considered if it's adopted by people and people start using it, the community itself, yeah, then yes. I mean, uh, it's already adopted by people. I think. Yeah, this good. is the issue. This is the issue. It's, it's a very, uh, uh, it's a very, uh, uh, Sophisticated, sophisticated discussion. Exactly, thank you. Sophisticated discussion, yeah. And uh, and long, and long, actually, there is controversy about uh, this issue, especially with uh, with touristic architecture in Elgona, for example. Yes. لا أو... هو الدسكشن كمان ممكن ي... يعني ممكن يوصل لمراحل انه يعني anthropologically speaking when 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 we say islamic architecture or we say christian architecture or or and so on يعني التسميات دي في حد ذاتها are very very controversial on some level you know if you call it islamic does this mean that only is people who belong to this religion own this architecture or own this uh, يعني it's it's a it's a discussion that can go deep قوي ما... Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 reflection with the on the built environment. This is, uh, yeah, this is yeah. a very nice topic. Yeah. Yes. I'm happy that uh, we are raising uh, interesting topics uh, like uh, the, the first presentation. We raised a new issue, which shared heritage. The second one is uh, what is considered the vernacular. Uh, because I, I tell you, some people think that uh, the informal uh, housing is vernacular, although it is using uh, cement, concrete, uh, yeah. bricks, okay. you know. So, uh, so it's really, really very interesting. Uh, uh, anyway, I think uh, we can... Uh, can I ask a last question to Sure, Ahmed? sure, sorry. Yes. Uh, I, I was wondering, in that case, how would you call the architecture of Hassan Fathi? Is it something like a post-vernacular architecture? It's a revival, yeah. It's like what we saw with the revival of the Islamic architecture, you know, like neo Mamluk and neo Islamic. So maybe, yeah, we can call it neo vernacular. Yeah, in all cases, it's not vernacular. Yeah, there is a term neo vernacular, N E O, not new. Neo, yeah. like a building like vernacular. You see? So, Doctor, I have a question. Sure. Um, since Ahmed mentioned that vernacular architecture should be built by local materials and by local people. So, regarding the informal settlements, for example, people mm. also find the available resources and they build their own houses, regardless of which material this is, whether it's cement or bricks, it's the available material there. So what makes it not vernacular and makes the other kind of mud brick buildings vernacular, even though both of them follow the same philosophy, which is building by the resources found in the, in the area and by local people? Well, in my opinion, it, uh, I consider it, of course, vernacular, uh, you see, but uh, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard topic. It's a research in itself. Introversion. <laughs> so why don't you just take this, uh, yeah, paper? <laughs> I, I take this topic. Yes, think no, about no, no, it. No, no, no. That, that was just. A <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I know it's a very hard debate to to find <laughs> an answer for. It. So uh, yes. I wouldn't like to debate in something like that because yeah, I don't know what. <laughs>
yeah. I don't know. It's, what it's a very it. hard debate. There's no answer right now, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Thank so you. Uh, are you ready, the students who will be presenting next uh, class? Uh, Nuran, can you stop sharing? Yes. I'll stop. So who will be presenting next class? Doctor, can I interrupt real quickly? Can we put hearts for Nuran? <laughs> can you put what? Hearts for Nuran. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm yes, Nuran, please put your slide again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No problem. Okay, I'll just put um. Oh, thank you, Marina. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, I remember. Thank you. Any hearts for you, Yanuran? Tamer too. Oh, that's what. We have a lot of Tamer and Salma and Maini who haven't listed presented. Okay, so who would like to present next time? Who would like to present next time? Tamer. I would love to present uh, the time after uh, next week. We have yeah. been up in thesis to <laughs> No, doctor, مش حاجة, but I want to do something comprehensive enough to. to uh, so you are uh, not the next time? The, the yes, time. I, I, I could be the, the time after, in two weeks. Lovely, lovely. Tamer in two weeks. This leaves Salma Umay. How are we? I have been up uh, thesis to next Tuesday, so I think it will be a bit hard. We we have thesis two every week. Yeah, Salma. Pin up. Pin up. With uh, whom? Uh, Dr. Ahmed Shadid. It's my. Uh, okay. The, the, the very early pin up, I think. Yes. So we need two, and we need to finish. Otherwise, we'll just assign uh, students. Salma, Salma, are you here? Yes, yeah, Salma, halfway through the, the, the presentation. Salma was talking now, I think. No, no I, I, my, no, I, it's my. No, it's mine. Ah, okay. Salma, uh, Salma went out during the presentation. Ah, okay. So she's absent. What What is happening then? Uh, okay. So I just want to draw your attention that Marina has just shared on the chat uh, her reference. Uh, you can do th that also, Nuran, if you uh, if you like. Yes, I can hear them right now in the chat. Yeah, you can do that. So students, uh, please uh, check on uh, the references, copy and paste on your notebook. So we need to have two students. If we don't have volunteers, so you will just, uh, Noran, you just share the privately to me. Please share it with, uh, with the students. Oh, okay. I can do with that. The, with the old the, uh, Marcus, everyone, yeah. For everyone. Okay. Yes, that's, uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so by the end of the class, if you students don't volunteer, you'll just assign two. We can assign Salma because she left. That's very mean from me. Students, where are you? Doctor, can you repeat the question? If you don't uh, 
assign yourself or you don't volunteer for representation next time, we will just assign two. Now Maya said she cannot, uh, Tamir said he cannot, Marwan did already, Marina has done it already. Uh, so Toa has done it already, so we don't have really... Doctor, do we have any uh, other students that did not attend today? Sharfa. Salma was here and uh, she disappeared. I think if someone did not attend, uh, they could yeah. be asked. <laughs> Salma, Salma and Fi Nuran Sulaiman are not present. I'm seeing that the one who didn't make a presentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Nuran, Nuran and Salma, like that. I think, yeah. Hi, can, can you please send them uh, like you are you are nominated to do the presentation okay. next time? I can tell Nurani, doctor. I can tell Nuran and Doha can do that. Yes, yes, yes. I will I will send them emails. Uh, Marwan, you are really brave. <laughs> okay. So who have uh, thought of his uh, paper topic? From the people who already have done their presentations, any any thoughts? Yes, who's yes? Uh, yes, it's Nora. <laughs> um, I'm I'm still yani, and I'm not sure if it's going to be the final one, but yani, for an international uh, building that has been yani, uh, has been yani, conducted under adaptive use, I was thinking an example of an old parliament in. Uh, uh, northwest of Wales that has been converted into um, a museum. Okay. Basically like a heritage site that is like considered like as a political history museum that was once um, an old parliament. Um, I, I, what I was you know, fascinated about is that the kind of like the techniques that they used, for in in um, and converting it into a modern building. Uh, I'm not sure yet because I found another any um, international one in Switzerland where they use. Oh, so like what is the local one? You need to choose one international and one local. Um, I was thinking the local maybe we call it Lugori because um, it is now like functioning as a theater or something like that. Don't so you think I'm, that? Uh, uh, at least the new function would be the same or the old function would be the same? There should be some similarities between the two cases, you see? Yani, uh, Nuron, I think it's, uh, it's not about just choosing two different uh, cases and, and presenting them, but uh, you should have a framework, an idea of what, what you want to talk about. Yani, do you want to talk about uh, transforming uh, uh, so the, the theater, uh, or do you want to talk about uh, uh, restoring a certain madna? But so is it the same function? So give me two examples of two different buildings that that were restored to perform the same function, or two buildings that were restored to perform different functions, and so on. Yani, there should be some kind of framework to begin with before choosing your case studies. Absolutely, because you need also to have a, a kind of uh, analysis and conclusion. You, you cannot analyze uh, completely different uh, issues, you see. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think maybe um, I should find like the thread that ties both uh, case studies together. So maybe like I would consider مثلا, um, buildings that have been used for a, fun a different function like maybe like an old industrial um, yes. factory or something that maybe has been transferred into like a different function that people can use masalan daily unlike what was used yani, back then uh, good idea على فكرة, uh, you can in egypt you can choose a building that you know uh, of heritage that is not used yet and uh, suggest uh, uh, use you see yeah. Uh, like, for example, if you choose uh, uh, one industrial building from uh, abroad, uh, international, like, for Tate Modern, huh? uh, 
uh, you rotate model that was uh, a power station and transformed into a museum. Yeah. Then you can come to Egypt and choose an, an abandoned industrial site that you know of, مثلا مصنع البيرة مصنع الأهرام بتاع البيرة بين السرارات مثلا. And then, uh, but you need to have resources. I don't know how you do this on online, uh, but uh, that is why I want you to start thinking about your paper from now. It is yeah. not just uh, uh, reading one article and uh, fabricating a paper or something like that. Uh, you have to have it more deep and more analysis and more also synthesis okay yeah. so let us uh, uh, think about doctor it. yes uh, I like thought a bit about my paper okay, I wanted to compare like uh, um, Versailles with either uh, Osril Baron or Aisha Fahm good idea why why I thought you would say uh, Versailles and uh, Montaza. Versailles is so big. And the size Versailles, of, was, uh, Versailles was a political statement that continued for years. I mean, it was, uh, and Versailles, that it put France down a, down a path, and you have to really look into it. ف if you're comparing Versailles يعني Versailles ده مثلا عارف حاجة زي كده وكان مشروع زي قناة السويس كده اللي هو فرنسا دينت بقى for so many years ودخلت حروب و... like it's it's a huge thing it's not comparable to أسرة عيشة فهمي أسرة that belongs to one person فهم؟ uh, that's why I was also considering أسرة uh, البارون like uh, it kind of carries the same symbolic idea of it's the house of uh, it's the house of uh, like uh, the leader and it's a bit like the White House but uh, like in the case of uh, Osril Baron it was where the Baron of Egypt lived and how they transformed it now into a museum and Versailles kind of was uh, the home of uh, Louis Quatorze and uh, I guess more than four or five of them and uh, how he invited the community and how that place was shut down as a a political place and now transformed into a museum? Well, uh, I think uh, you do a little bit of research. Today, Doha, we are just uh, investigating uh, what we want to do and give just uh, highlights uh, or directions. Uh, but maybe uh, you go into Versailles uh, and see what is uh, in there and how you can form your paper and the debate. Uh, then we talk again, uh, and you can ask for consultation with Doha or with me or with Ahmed Mansour uh, to, to check. Uh, okay, Marwan, but think about it and uh, find yes, your references. Uh, the scale is important, of course. The scale, uh, like uh, Versailles, is a big campus. I would. Uh, I was going uh, to think that you want to have it comparable with Montaza, for especially that Montaza is uh, go, uh, undergoing uh, a big development scheme now. I think uh, you might find reference on the internet. It was also, uh, uh, a, a ruling place during summers uh, for uh, for the kings. Uh, think about it. Uh, see what you want to do and think about the, uh, the logic of uh, your choice, okay? I wouldn't say no until you, uh, you see how we are going to do it. Okay, doctor. Uh, I just uh, shared with you... Oh, the, yeah, I saw it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, about the jewelry, the Masna al Very interesting. Yeah, with Furan Shaheen, yes, Furan. Uh, uh, if she can find references, I don't know if there are any. I had I had one uh, reference, but uh, I don't know where to find it now. Uh, it was Fakirel, uh, you know, the German Institute. They had uh, uh, this, this tall guy, what was his name? 
Trump. Anyway, uh, try to find something. And uh, I think the German Institute has done uh, a study uh, on it. So uh, now we have uh, Nuran and Marwan. Who else? Don't be intimidated, uh, guys. Uh, we are just discussing. It's important that you start your paper. Uh, now, even uh, for the people who have not done the presentation yet, they can connect the presentation with the paper. Uh, you just presented a beautiful study on vernacular architecture. Why don't you just go deeper in that? And uh, just a suggestion and find another site vernacular international and see uh, 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 how the restoration and the conservation process in both the places and how this is compatible with the uh, UNESCO charters. The same for uh, Marwan Bardo. Yeah. Marwan uh, did something on Wadi uh, Hitem, also natural heritage. Just a suge suggestion. Like in Taban, I would be very much interested to see how Marwan uh, would tie uh, Baron with any uh, place in uh, 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 with any international case. Dr. Dalila? Yes, Tim? Uh, uh, I'm thinking of doing my research on the White Desert. Um, it's said that it's a protected site, but I'm not sure whether it's uh, included in the UNESCO um, World Natural Heritage. I don't think it's considered as oh, a UNESCO. It's not, it's not uh, yet uh, on the site, but I'm sure that it's on the tentative uh, list. Yes, but uh, I so, think it's a so you want to revisit uh, the charter of the natural heritage? You mean you mean for your presentation or your paper, Yatim? I mean for both. I think I can tie both of them. I can okay, work. Okay. So uh, Barwan has done on natural heritage. I don't mind at all if you uh, okay. visit the same uh, charter. It's very long and very big. And okay. uh, maybe uh, your uh, role in the presentation would be and uh, uh, finding the aspects that, that uh, should uh, be applied on the site. Like for one, his work was ready. You see, okay. uh, the file was already there. So you can form a, a kind of a draft for that file. Perfect. For the White Perfect. Desert. Have you visited the White Desert? Never, but I really want to, Doctor. I, I saw a lot of images. Uh, it looks so amazing. So uh, yeah, it's um, really very beautiful. Yes, it's like the word Mars. Like yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyone um, else? Uh, doctor, Doctor Dalila, I'm thinking of doing my paper about uh, the Jewelry Museum in Alexandria. I think it. I think it's very. I visited it already, and I think it's very interesting and beautiful, and it's very attractive for tourists. This is for your uh, presentation or your uh... paper? Hmm? I don't know if I can, I don't know if this is related to the presentation or not, but I'm thinking of doing it for my paper. Yeah, okay, but it, it could fit also for the presentation if you visit the Venice uh, Charter again, because the Venice mm. uh, Charter is on restoration and uh, reuse, so you can uh, tackle a point Okay, okay, In, uh, then I can do it on be good if you tie all your work, you know, you, you did a little piece on uh, the presentation and you complete it with comparisons and more deep uh, on the paper. Uh, that really should be okay, good. Okay, so... What's your, what's your project? Then I'll tackle the restoration and you... Yeah, what is your project, uh, your, your project site, Yanai? Um, my project site is in Ismailia. In Ismailia, doctor. We don't want to do something in Ismailia. It's, about... it's full of heritage. The museum um, of Ismailia. Okay, I can. <laughs> uh, I'm actually doing a museum. <laughs> um, but it's okay, not me. We can tell you next time what I'm working uh, in now. It's. Uh, 
the restoration of uh, uh, the first headquarter of Suez Canal Company in Ismaili. Mm. You know this uh, timber building, the wood building. Yes. Uh, on, uh, so we are doing, uh, we are transforming it into a museum. Oh, okay. Anyway, you might think of uh, something also in Ismaili. And you have a very good reference. I mean, you have uh, Dali, I mean, Dr. Dalila herself is doing the music. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I can share, of course, a few things. Uh, but there is a very, very good book. Uh, I don't know if you uh, have it uh, on Ismailia. Actually, the, the three cities of the Suez Canal, Saeed, yeah. Ismailia, and Swiss, each has uh, a book by the French uh, uh, Archaeological Institute. Yes, I think I saw this book, yes. Yeah. That's full of history of uh, and images of the whole... Yes, city. the documentation. Yes, I know. Very good documentation of these three cities. Anyway, yes. um, it's good that you started thinking. Anyone else would like to share with us uh, the topic? Doctor, I have a question. Um, sure. Regarding the paper. So, um, if I'm going to talk about the White Desert, uh, yep. So I should I should choose another uh, natural heritage site in order to compare the White Desert with. Yes. So this should not be local; it should be an international it's site. International, yeah. You have a lot of international heritage. Something similar to the White Desert, but on the international scale. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Toa Mere asked me a couple of questions, and maybe I answer them now. Toa, is, Toa, is Toa still with us? It looks like she's not here. Toa? I'm here, Doctor. Oh. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay, what, um, what is the question? Uh, is Toa asked me if, uh, uh, if, if, you're, if, if you're required to uh, do a literature review in your paper and if you're required to conduct interviews. Um, given that we're not in the middle, I don't think interviews are... are um, are a requirement by any means, but if you certainly talk to, so, I mean, if you're choosing a case study where you can talk to someone, say Dr. Dalila or say Dr. Ahmed or had anything you can communicate with, who can give you data and information, definitely go ahead. Literature review, the Maldo Kibir usually conduct a literature review, low and the argument, but at the same time, again, if, if, Mentioning your case studies, you find a paper or, or an article had the El Haga Muhammad, then definitely include in precedence Batak or references Batak. But a full on mm -hmm. literature review is, is something big that I don't think you're required to do. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, I have a Thank you. But see, I mean, even if you know someone, I mean, many students have. Uh, uh, sources, you would be surprised, a relative or a friend uh, of the parents or or even among us, you can you can ask, uh, 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 like May, she mentioned the Jewelry Museum, uh, and it happened, مثلاً, that I know somebody who can, uh, she can interview uh, over the phone or over uh, uh, Skype or something. Um, that that is also possible. So whoever wants mm, that will to be a, you think of whom you want to talk, you see? Okay, tell me. Like uh, Marwan uh, Masalan, the, the Baron, uh, the, the architect who did it is Agnishka, I think. She did the Lard al Madhafi. And I know the contractors, Masalan, and yeah. Yes. Back to the White Desert, I know somebody who's, uh, who has visited, maybe he can give you photos. Mm -hmm. yani, yani, you know, if you need to, to do an interview, consult with us. And please, the paper, you just, uh, you just consult many times with us. Uh, because we, we, yani, we don't see you, so at least uh, we, we should communicate even outside the class. Uh, I was thinking. Oh, I will do some things. I um, I was thinking of doing some things. I like the same typology and uh, the same building type here and internationally. Like how they dealt with it. 
لايك like مثلا if it's حاجة religious هنا and abroad أو كان في example تقريبا ل um, a train station برضو في Spain versus حاجة هنا يعني I want to do a comparison ما بين same typology هنا وبرا برافو هو this is what is required I think the typology and the size and also the new function are the elements that should influence your choices guys okay Doctor, okay. is there a WhatsApp group for this uh, quiz? Yes. No. So I created. There is. There is. Who's speaking? Uh, my. How is my name? Just send the message. Yes. Everyone uh, would know. Okay, guys. Uh, can we have uh, a break for uh, ten minutes? Uh, yes, Doctor. But I have a break. about the paper uh here the paper and you can ask you can consult your marina with us you just need to send the whatsapp Or, uh, or message, uh, our phones, I think we shared them. I don't know how you put the, uh, the contacts of all the class with the, the professors. Yeah, you yeah. find, it, you yeah. find it on the syllabus, come in. I put the contacts and the office hours on the syllabus. Okay, doctor. I can have a topic, but maybe I will say it after the break. Okay. So let us take a break because I need it badly, guys. <laughs> For coffee, bring your coffee with you, please. Okay, okay doctor. Yeah, let's okay. see you in a while. See you. Bye.